Um, so you had sent me a, um, so how are you first? Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Me? I am great. I'm great. It's, um, what is it? The second or third week in January. I'm not even sure. It's like, it's almost the third week. So I'm getting back into the routine of, uh, of living. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so I'm okay. Yes, I got your, um, your little email a minute ago, actually, before we came on. I had no idea, um, what we were going to be talking about. And, um, you know, I, I, I thought it was funny because, you know, you, you always have a way of just sort of like putting labels on everything, you know, um, and not just in this context. And, uh. I thought it was funny when you, you said, well, do, do I think they'll think I'm radical? Because, um, you know, you had asked me if, if I thought the last time I think we talked about um, whether they would think we were woke or I was woke or whatever. And now it's radical. And uh, <laughs> it's funny because I don't really think of myself in, in those kinds of labels. You know, I never really... I mean, I can't imagine someone thinking that I'm radical, but I suppose that anything is possible. And, um, but it would be kind of funny. <laughs> no, I don't think it's radical to say to the government that they need to be more, um, what's the word I would use for them? I think they talk a good talk about human rights, but they haven't really walked the walk um, to the extent that I think that they are capable of walking, you know? It, I think in this case where you have millions and millions of undefended, innocent civilians who had done nothing wrong at all to have warranted being incarcerated on their work sites for their entire working lives, before they were even born, they were already incarcerated because once they were born to a mother who was incarcerated, they too would be incarcerated for whatever crime she committed, because she must have committed some kind of crime to, to, to be incarcerated on her work site for her entire life. Um, I, I don't think that um, these innocent civilians did anything wrong to have warranted that kind of punishment. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Correct me if I'm radical. <laughs> For suggesting that and um, I think that the governments involved have not done a good enough job of expressing remorse of expressing an understanding and sensitivity to the consequences of these unlawful extrajudicial irrational incarcerations of millions and millions and millions and millions of people based on monolithic criteria that they shared a common uh, complexion or hair type and uh, and therefore they were relegated to working for de facto employers for their entire working lives without even a sim symbolic dollar of pay um, ever right and when they were finally released from this what I believe to be an unlawful uh, incarceration unlawful pursuant to the existing laws at the time including the Magna Carta the British Magna Carta um, which is 800 years old and which 806 years old as of today, I think, and has been in effect uninterruptedly all that time for eight, nine centuries. Um, I think that um, it is clear for me anyway that the governments owed these people and their relatives an explanation at a minimum as to why something like this occurred in the first place and why it was allowed to continue for so long. I think the governments today still owe that duty of care to the relatives because they are still feeling the impact. They're still living the, the vestiges and the legacy of these centuries of unlawful incarceration of their antecedents. And um, the explanation has not been forthcoming. 
none of these governments, including the United States and England, which are two of the most, um, I think, uh, culpable defendants in this case, um, have ever expressed the kind of understanding of what they did here or remorse for what was done that I think is, is absolutely necessary. The notion that the officials in the government who actually participated in this are all dead or are no longer in office, to me, is not a sufficient basis for inaction or non-action, right? Donald Trump is no longer the president of the United States, but the, the United States government still has certain responsibilities that it must meet no matter who's sitting in the office. Um, Bill Clinton is no longer in, in, in the White House. George Bush, senior and junior, are no longer in the White House. Barack Obama is no longer in the White House. George Washington is no longer in the White House. Um, Abraham Lincoln is no longer in the White House. But the government continues despite that, right? And so do the obligations and responsibilities of the government. In my opinion, they continue well beyond the sort of transience of, of a particular president or administration. And ditto for England, you know, I don't know all their prime ministers, but from Margaret, Margaret Thatcher to, um, to the current sitting prime minister, Boris, uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting his name at the moment, <laughs> Bar Boris, president, prime minister Boris, um, Johnson, Boris Johnson, and, um, you know, or the monarchy for that matter, you know, many monarchs have come and gone, and the monarchy of, of the British Empire also are culpable and liable to the relatives of these people for, at a minimum, an explanation. But I don't think anything is radical, though, about saying that, look, this harm that was perpetrated against millions and millions of people went really deep and it still cuts to this day in terms of the mental and psychological health of the relatives who have to live with this idea and notion that they descended from non-persons, literally non-persons, non-human, um, property, chattel, whatever the case may be, and who to a large extent are still treated in a way that I think uh, leaves a lot to be desired in many instances in society. And I also think, you know, for the young, for the children of all races and, and creeds and colors, it's such a disservice and, and it's, it's, it's so wrong to, to fill their heads with the kind of narrative that we're, we're filling their heads with about this history and about this these people who were part of the earthly community and our human family. I think that um, we should want to fill them with something healthier and and just less toxic than that kind of, of, of toxic garbage, really. Um, we, we should want to fill them with, look, you know what? We came upon, we didn't do it ourselves, but we found it. You know, we came upon the tragedy. We came upon the shipwreck. We came upon the massacre. <coughs> we came upon, you know, the mass torts and the mass deaths and just the injustice and all of this horror. We came upon it. We met it here. And we didn't just step over it, right? We tried our best to clean it up and to fix it and to do something about it. And I think that's so much better for the children to know that we tried our best to make something that wasn't right better. Now, the idea that President Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, emancipated the slaves, quote-unquote slaves, um, is a nice idea, but I don't think that it's complete, you know? I mean, he did what he could. He, he did what he knew. He did what he, what, what he was able to. Who knew? Who, who knows? Uh, what he would have done if he had lived, you know, what enlightenment, what light bulbs would have gone on for him and, you know, what other statements he would have made in his life. We don't know. We don't know. 
we know that he stood up and he let these people out of this bondage, right? But I think it's incumbent on those who have followed him, the other leaders, to pick that baton up and to continue the work because it's not finished. It's like it's like a virus in a way that sort of just is lying there dormant in many people. Many people don't even know that they are affected by this toxic virus that has been implanted in all of us. You know, this this division, this this race baiting horribleness, this um you know just just the whole thing is is so awful. And we don't even realize how it impacts us all on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think. And the light bulb doesn't go on for most of us ever for our entire lives. We, we just live like that, you know? And um, I, I just think it's, it, it's so unfortunate, you know? And the notion that someone will think I'm radical for saying, look, we have to go back to this. We've got to deal with this. We have to fix this to the extent we can. We've got to change the narrative about these people. They're not slaves. They were not slaves. Okay, they, these are human beings against whom a crime was committed. These are human beings who had rights. They had the right to have rights. Their rights were not respected. But retrospectively, we can say, look, we're not going to be labeling these people in this way. We're not going to be calling them slaves. They were civilians. They were innocent, undefended civilians. Crimes were committed against them. We are not going to continue that. We recognize their rights. We recognize their humanity. Okay. And maybe even we recognize that they had labor rights on top of human rights and that we are going to create some kind of mechanism or fund or whatever to compensate their relatives who were injured and are injured because of these injuries that occurred um, to their to their forebears. And so if that's radical, I mean, it's radical, but I don't think there's anything particularly radical about it. I think it's perfectly normal. It's like, it's like a vaccine, you know, <laughs> to me, it's like a, it's like a vaccine. Blah. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I don't, I don't think most people would think of it that way, but certainly that's how I think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs>